Hi, today's video is chapter 4, section 2, and we're going to multiply matrices today. Now, hopefully adding matrices yesterday was pretty easy for you. Today is completely different than what we did yesterday. So the rules that applied yesterday aren't going to apply today. First, we're going to start, start off by just figuring out, can we actually multiply two matrices together? So if I'm going to multiply two matrices together, we know that the dimensions are written by the number of rows, by the number of columns. In order to multiply, these two numbers have to be the same. So the number of columns in the first matrix has to be the same as the number of rows in the second column, or in the second matrix. And then the dimensions of your resulting matrix will be the number of rows from the first one and the number of columns from the second one. I know that sounds really confusing. So let's just move on to an example. We have, remember, the number of rows by the number of columns, the number of rows by the number of columns. When we look at this, the two middle numbers are not the same, therefore we can't multiply. Now for when we added yesterday, the dimensions had to be exactly the same and then you could add. For multiplication, the middle numbers we have, to, have to be the same. The number of columns in the first one has to be the same as the number of rows in the second one. Alright, so let's look at our last example. We've got two rows and two columns. Two by two. We look at our next one, we've got two rows, and then we have one, two, three, four columns going up and down. Now we look and our middle numbers are the same. So that means that we can multiply. And then, oh, not 2 by 2, but 2 by 4. Then our resulting matrix, so the dimensions of our answer, is going to be a 2 by 4 matrix. Now, not only is trying to figure out how, if it can multiply is more difficult, the actual process of multiplying can be very, very difficult. So you need to make sure that you're paying very, very close attention here. So if I want to decide how to multiply, you're going to multiply across the rows and down the columns. Now, right, that, right now, that makes no sense to you. So when we decide, remember, the number of rows from the first one and the number of columns from the second one is going to determine our dimensions. So I'm going to look in the fact that I have one, two rows in the first one, and this is a two by two, and a two by three. So I know that I can multiply because my middle numbers are the same. And then I'm going to use the columns from the second one. So this is column one, column two, column three. You're going to multiply across the row and down the column. So I'm going to go across and down. And the way we do that, again, it's going to seem a little complicated. Just bear with me. So we've got row one, row two, column one, column two, and column three. So our resulting matrix is going to be a two by three, which we already knew from our dimensions. When we multiply, here we've got row one, column one. So that's what I'm going to multiply together. I'm going to multiply row one by column one. And I'm going to multiply A times E, because those are corresponding entries. And I'm going to add B times F, or B times H, sorry. Now if I want the next entry, if I want row one, column two, I multiply row one, and then column two. So I, A times F plus B times I, and then so forth. So if I want this entry, this entry is corresponding to row one, column three, so I'm gonna multiply together my row one and my column three. So I'm gonna multiply A times G and add that to 
B times J. So that will be my first row. Now when I want to find the second row again, if I want, so let's not go in order, let's skip around. If I want this entry right here, I'm looking at row two, column three. That means I'm going to multiply together row two and column three. So it's going to be C times G, because it's the first two. And I'm going to add that to D times J. So if you're trying to figure out which numbers to multiply together, just think about the, an the entry and the answer and where that would come from. So row two, column one, we multiply together row two, column one. C times E, add that to D times H. And last, this entry is row two, column two, so I multiply together row two and column two. So we've got first is C and F, so multiply C and F and add that to D times I. Like I said, I know right now you're probably like, huh? Just a couple examples that I'll, you'll catch on. So we look at number one, it's the number of rows by the number of columns. So I've got one, two, three rows, one, two columns. We look over here and that's square, so that's easy, so that's a two by two. Because the middle numbers are the same, that tells me I can multiply. And I know that my answer is going to be a three by two. So that means I'm gonna have three rows and that's gonna be coming from the first matrix, row one, row two, row three, and I'm going to have two columns. And those columns we look at in the second one. So if I want my first entry here, I have row one, column one. So that means I'm going to multiply together row one and column one. So negative two times a negative one plus three times a negative two. And then if I want, let's go, since we went across before, we can go down. It doesn't matter the order you do it. So if I want to find my next entry down, it's row two, column one. So this time, instead of, I'm going to multiply row two by column one. So that's one times a negative one plus a negative four times a negative two. And then if I want row three, column one, so that's six times a negative one plus zero times a negative two. All right, what I want you to do now is press pause, see if you can figure out the next column, so your three missing entries, and then go ahead and get your answer. So press pause now and play when you're done. All right, your answer, you should have had a negative four, six, seven, negative 13, negative six, 18. If you did not get those numbers, press pause, go back and see where your numbers are wrong in the previous step. All right, moving on. We've got two matrices here. We've got a two by two and a two by two, so we know we can multiply them because our middle numbers are the same. What I want you to do is I want to multiply A times B. So we're gonna set this up with A coming first, B coming second, and when we multiply them, we know we're going to have a two by two matrix again. And so we're going to multiply row one, because our rows are coming from here. Our columns are coming from here. So I'm going to multiply row one by column one. So three times one is three. Two times two is four. So I'm going to add those two numbers together. The more comfortable you get with this, the more shortcuts you can take. So I want to go to the right next, which is row one, column two. So I'm going to multiply three times a negative four, which is a negative 12, plus two times one, which is two. Then I'm going to move down to the second row. Row two times column one. Negative one times one is a negative one. Zero times two is zero. And then I want to find my last entry of row two, column two. So I'm going to multiply row two and column two. So negative one and negative four 
it's a positive 4. 0 and 1 is 0. When I add those together, I end up with 7. Negative 12 and 2 is a negative 10. Negative 1 here and 4 there. Alright, for number 3 it's very similar, but instead of doing A times B, we're going to do B times A. So our B matrix is going to come first, and our A matrix is going to come second. Alright, again, I want you to try this one on your own, so go ahead and press pause. When you're done, come check your answer. Alright, for number three, you should have ended up with a matrix 7, 2 and row 1, 5, 4 and row 2. Again, if you didn't get that right, go back to the previous step and see where your math was wrong. One thing I want you to notice is for multiplication, you should note that order does matter in which you multiply. So AB does not necessarily equal BA. Sometimes it does, most of the time it's not going to. Alright, and I know today's note's going to be very independent. I want you to try these next two on your own. So there's A and there's B. I want you to try multiplying AB and then multiply BA. Press pause. When you're done, press play. Alright, for our first one, multiplying A times B, we've got a 2 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 1, so we can multiply and our answer is going to be a 2 by 1. So we're going to multiply row 1 by column 1. So 2 times 5 gives us 10. 1 times 2 gives us 2. So 10 plus 2 gives us 12. Then after that, we are going to multiply row 2 by column 1. So 4 times 5 is 20. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. 20 minus 6 is 14. Going to 5, we've got a 2 by 1 multiplied by a 2 by 2. Our two middle numbers aren't the same, so we can't multiply those two matrices together. And moving on, just like adding, you can solve when you are multiplying. You just got to know what to multiply together. So if I were to multiply row 1 and column 1, that would correspond row 1, column 1, to this entry. If I multiply row 2 by column 1, I get this entry. If I multiply row 3 by column 1, I'm going to get y. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve for x. If I wanted to multiply row 1 by column 1, I would have to set it equal to 6 because row 1, column 1 corresponds to that entry. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got a negative 2 times 1, and then we add that to a negative 1 times x, or a positive 1 times x, and then we've got 2 times 3. So this one's a little bit different because we have three entries across. You're just going to multiply all corresponding pieces. So 2 and 1, 1 and x, 2 and 3. And we know that's going to equal our entry of 6. So we've got a negative 2 plus x plus 6 is equal to 6. So I've got x plus 4 equals 6, and we find that x is equal to 2. Now you also could have set it up using row 2 and column 1 and set it equal to 19, but you could not have used row 3 because that would have been set equal to y. Now that we know x, we have to solve for y. Now y is in row 3, column 1. That means we have to use row 3 and we have to use column 1. So that's 0 times 1, your two entry, first entries, negative 2 and x, and then 4 times 3, and we set equal to y. So that's 0, and sorry, we know what x is, so we're going to fill in x, and that's 2. So 0 minus 4 plus 12 gives us y, and we get that y is equal to 8. Now I'm going to show you tomorrow a very, very convenient shortcut on how you can do this on your calculator. The only catch is you can do adding, subtracting, multiplying on your calculator, but your calculator 
won't have the variables, so anytime you're solving, you'll do it by hand. And that's for tomorrow.